Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. Today, today we remember the solemnity of St. Joseph, the foster father of Jesus. Not much is known about St. Joseph other than what we find in the Gospels. Even then, there is not much. That doesn't mean there is not much to learn from his life. St. Joseph is a great example of faith and obedience. After finding out that Mary was pregnant, not from him, as her future husband, he couldn't have Mary stoned to death, but he decided not to. An angel of God came to him in the dream, telling him to still take Mary as his wife because it was by the Holy Spirit that she was conceived. St. Joseph trusted and had faith to obey this message. Let us pray that we, have, that we learn from his example and have courage and faith in all we do. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn number 376 in the spirit and song, The Eyes and Hands of Christ, also found on your song sheet. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. We gather on this day before the beginning of spring break to celebrate a great feast. In fact, it's a solemnity, which is a feast of the highest order, and it's the solemnity of St. Joseph. We have much to learn, as Haley told us in the introduction of the Mass, we have much to learn from St. Joseph. He was a quiet man, and yet he lived a life of faith. As we gather today, we ask God's forgiveness for the times when, when perhaps we have been busy about many things in our lives, doing many things in our lives, but forgetting the gift of faith, forgetting to grow in faith. For those times, let us ask God's forgiveness. I confess to, to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. 
Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your Church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your hair after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his loyal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham who is the father of all of us, as it is written. I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of, Mar of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Now this is how the birth of Jesus came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to 
today the church celebrates a great feast, the feast of St. Joseph, foster father of Jesus, the husband of Mary. And as I said at the beginning of Mass, it's such an important feast that the church gives it a special name. It's called the Solemnity of St. Joseph. And a solemnity is a feast of the highest order. And so the church is calling all of us as her children to remember how important St. Joseph is in the history of our salvation. You know, we, we oftentimes, and rightly so, we, we think of Mary and we honor Mary. And we honor Mary because, you know, she gave her yes to God's plan. Because when Mary said yes to God's plan that she would be the mother of, of the Savior of the world, in that moment, the Word took on flesh, became flesh in Mary, and Mary gave birth to the world's Savior. And so, you know, we honor Mary because of her yes. But as we reflect on the life of St. Joseph, we honor St. Joseph for the very same reason. Because as we heard in the Gospel today, as the, the news that Mary was expecting a child came, and in the, the, the Jewish customs for marriage were a little bit different than, than our customs. So there was a period where you're engaged, but you don't yet live together. And it was during that time that the angel had come to Mary. Mary conceived Jesus in her womb. And when Joseph finds out that Mary is expecting a baby and he knows he's not the father of the baby, he decides quietly not to bring her any shame to divorce her quietly, is simply to end their, their, their engagement quietly. But then he has that dream and the angel says, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child that is in her womb has been conceived by the Holy Spirit in a completely unique way. And this child will be, will be the savior of the world and you are to name him Jesus, a name which means God saves. And so what does Joseph do? He gets up from the dream, brings Mary to his home, marries her. And so he too gave his yes to God's plan. And just as for Mary, when Mary found out that she was going to be the mother of Jesus without a human father, you know, Mary must have lots of questions. Well, Joseph, when the angel says that this child has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, Joseph too had questions. And yet, what did he do? Because this is what God was asking of him. He said yes to God's plan. And we think of the power of Mary's yes, the power of St. Joseph's yes. And just as because of Mary's yes, all, all generations call Mary blessed, so too because of St. Joseph's yes to God's plan, we too call him blessed. And today we celebrate his feast, the solemnity of St. Joseph. You know, as we reflect on, on the life of St. Joseph, we know very, very little about Joseph. But we can be sure of this. He was a very good man. Because as God made his plan that he was going to send Jesus into the world, we know that with great care he chose Mary, a worthy mother of his son. And then he chose a man who would be the foster father, the man who would care for Jesus and Mary, the man who would, would give Jesus a trade, the carpenter's trade, a man who would protect his, his, his son. And so you imagine when God's looking around to see who will that man be, he would have chosen a truly good man. In fact, the scriptures pay St. Joseph the greatest compliment that anyone can ever find in the scriptures. He is called a just man. St. Joseph is the just man. And justice in the Bible means that a person is exactly what God wants that person to be. You know, we all strive to be just. Throughout our lives, we're striving to become what God wants us to be, to, to, to be good and holy people, to be good followers of Jesus. But the scriptures tell us that Joseph was that just man. He was that man who was exactly what God wanted him to be. And this was the man that God chose to be the foster father of Jesus. As we honor Mary, because she's the mother of our Savior, so too the church honors with great joy St. Joseph today, as he is the foster father, the protector, the caregiver of, of Jesus. And St. Joseph has been named the patron saint of the universal church. So he is the, the saint that we ask, we pray that he will intercede for the, for the church throughout the world. And I suppose on the Feast of St. Joseph, if we would ask St. Joseph for anything, we would pray that he would pray that we too would become just, that we would be exactly what God wants us to be, the kind of brother or sister that God wants us to be in our family, the kind of son or daughter that God wants us to be to our parents, the kind of classmate and student here at St. Mark that God calls us to be. And then as we discover our vocations, whether that be to the married life or the single life or the priesthood or the religious life, we pray to St. Joseph, the just man, that we will be just, that by God's grace and cooperating with that grace, that we will be just what God wants us to be. St. Joseph was that just man. And so how right it is today that we ask him to pray for all of us, that we too be just that we be what God wants us to be. 
We ask St. Joseph to hear our prayer and to intercede for us on this, his great feast. Now let us stand in prayer, entrusting in God's plan for us, which is a good and a holy plan. Let us turn to God in prayer, bringing our needs, the needs of our world, to Him. pray for Pope Francis, Archbishop Tobin, Father Todd, Deacon Tom, and all those who lead us in our faith, that they may be good and faithful shepherds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that world leaders will work together to bring about peace and prosperity in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who do violence and injustice in the world, that the grace of God might convert their hearts to see the error of their ways and repent in this season of Lent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for vocations that we may learn to discern and hear the voice of God calling us to live lives of holiness. We especially pray for Casimir Semino Reyes, Simon Brute Seminarian, and Mr. Jeffrey Mooney, a postulant for the Congregation of Holy Cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the suffering, the dying, and those who will die today, and all those who care for them, that God's healing and mercy might bless them in these difficult times. At this Mass, we pray especially for Bernice Cyphers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we all have a safe spring break and come back to school refreshed and recharged to finish the school year strong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to accept the prayers of your people, the prayers that our classmates have spoken out loud for us this morning, but also the prayers that each of us carries in our heart. In your goodness, we ask you to hear us and answer us. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. As we prepare our gifts for the altar, please join in singing from the Spirit and Song number 312, above all number 312 in the Spirit and Song, also found on your song sheets.
Now pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of the name, for our good and the good of all the whole church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the solemnity of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you, Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Together in song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember your servant, Bernice, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with Saints Joseph and Mark, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand and join together in prayer and we pray in the very words that Jesus has taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn found in your spirit and song book, number 420, the You Know Who I Am, number 420 the in the spirit and song, also located the on the song sheets. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Robert, the body of Christ.
Now we have gathered together at table and celebrated the holy sacrifice and received the body and blood of Jesus. Call to mind yesterday's living stations of the cross, during which we reflected on the passion and death of Jesus. Let us remember now at every mass and always Jesus' great love for us when he died on the cross. We know that through, that through that sacrifice of his life, Jesus won for us our salvation, something we can never win on our own. Let us be sorry for it and ask forgiveness for the times we haven't been grateful for that sacrifice. Let us pray that we gain a better appreciation for that sacrifice during this Lenten season. And let us be joyful for the gift of salvation that was won for us in that sacrifice. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them through Christ our Lord. And in the name of everyone, I want to thank our eighth graders for the absolutely beautiful living stations that they, they offered us yesterday. You know, the, those last steps of Jesus came alive for us as we, we watched each, each of the stations. And it was a beautiful witness, a testimony to the faith of our eighth graders. We are very grateful to them. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 311, in your spirit and songbook, Your Only Son, number 311, also found on your song sheets. Please be seated.
Let us stand. Lord Jesus, as we gather in your presence on this day before the beginning of spring break, we come before you with gratitude. As individuals, we thank you for the awesome gift of life that you have given to each of us, the possibilities that you give to us in this life to do good. We thank you for the gift of the families in which we have been born, the families in which we live and learn so much. As a school community, we thank you for the gift of our school, we thank you for all those who support St. Mark's School. We thank you for our teachers, our classmates, for Mr. Albertson, for all of those who behind the scenes each and every day are serving us so that we can learn. We ask you as we come before you today, one by one, that we may give voice to the gratitude that we have. We thank you yesterday for the living stations that our eighth graders provided for us powerful reminder of the love that you have for us, that Jesus would lay down his life on the cross for each of us. Let us come before you with grateful hearts, and as we kneel before you today, may each of us express our gratitude to you. And may our lives during spring break and after we come back to school, may our lives express that gratitude as we live in the way in which you have called us to live as followers of Jesus. And we make this prayer in his most holy name. Amen.